Our second presenter is Dr. Jinying Zhu. She's associate professor at University of Nebraska Lincoln. And her research focuses on non-destructive evaluation and sensing technologies for civil infrastructure using ultrasonics, air coupled sensors, and GPR. She's a recipient of the 2012 ASNT Fellowship Award, and her and her advised graduate students are five-time winners of the ACI James Instruments Award. Her presentation is multi-sensor data collection and infusion using deep autoencoders, condition evaluation of concrete bridge steps. And with that, Jin Ying, please take it away. Thank you for joining us. Okay, thank you for the introduction. Uh, okay, so I will not repeat the long title, uh, but I'd like to introduce my co-authors, uh, the collaborators in this research project. Uh, so uh, Sapir Pashtuni, uh, he is actually the main person um, doing all this data analysis uh, and prepare the presentation. So um, me and uh, Sapir, we are the team focused on the GPR and data fusion. And Dr. Chen Wook Sim and uh, Kwang He uh, Wong, uh, they were responsible for the imaging analysis. And uh, the, our collaborators uh, at P uh, BYU, Dr. Mazil and Guthuri, uh, they were responsible for uh, developing and um, apply the uh, vertical impedance test. Uh, later, I will uh, briefly explain that technology. So uh, I think the first speaker give a very good uh, in, uh, introduction, the background to why we need different types of NDE technologies. So they provide different, uh, the complementary information about the, the bridge. So they complement in different ways, either they complement in uh, spatial resolution and and they also complement in the um, a working principle and uh, different data types. So, uh, the like I mentioned, the GPR give um, the precursor information about the corrosion that usually represents the early stage uh, of deterioration. So, in this research, we used uh, three different technologies. One is GPR, so shown in this uh, picture. And we also did acoustic, uh, but we, uh, uh, we, we choose not to include the acoustic data in this data fusion research. And another one is the vertical impedance, uh, vertical electrical impedance by the BYU team. And uh, another is a very fast, the image collection. So it's a vehicle mounted uh, high resolution camera and that can drive at the normal traffic speed and collect the surface image. And then uh, we can generate the uh, evaluation, the deterioration map uh, immediately on the site. And then here's the, uh, the BYU collaborator is collecting the sample for chloride analysis. So a uh, little bit of brief uh, background about the ground penetrating radar. So it uses electromagnetic wave and penetrate into um, concrete and get the reflection from the rebars and from uh, boundaries. So here it shows this is the concrete surface and each hyperbola represents a reflection from a rebar. So, just by visually looking this image, actually it contains a lot of information. So in the good uh, area, we notice there is a clear reflection from rebar, but in the deterioration uh, region, we notice the image that become blurry. Uh, we also notice the rebars, the reflection depth, well, I mean, so apparent depth on this image looks so very a lot. That can be either caused by the actual rebar depth variation, but uh, probably in most of cases. So in this region, we notice the rebar looks like the deeper. Actually, it's because the concrete, concrete cover has lower velocity. So deterioration will reduce the velocity of the EM wave and they, it takes a longer time. So that makes it uh, appears deeper. 
So the depth and the time, those are two informations. So with the uh, regular um, uh, velocity times multiply time equal to the depth. So we only know one time. So we cannot determine the rebar depth or the velocity at the same time. But in the, uh, recently, uh, our UL team develops a complete GPR analysis program. We can automatically extract the GPR amplitude at the rebar, and we can also automatically identify rebars and we can determine both the wave velocity. If we know the wave velocity and then we measure the time and then we can accurately determine the uh, concrete cover thickness. So um, here just shows a raw GPR uh, image and this is the process of the image. So the entire GPR analysis includes the multiple steps so first we need to correct the image and uh, identify the zero of time. Only if you get the accurate zero of that time, then you can actually tell the accurate arrival time. So, I mean, the time to from the concrete surface to rebar, and then you can know the, uh, get the depth. So the first step, time, zero time offset, and then try to remove the background to increase the contrast. And then the migration. Migration means we're going to concentrate all the energy from the rebar, because current the rebar reflection is a hyperbola. We're going to focus this energy into a single point, into a very small region. That will in increase, uh, improve the uh, quality of the um, GPR rebar amplitude. And it also makes it easier to identify the rebars. And then the rebar picking. Uh, initially, we pick the um, uh, rebar based on the uh, amplitude. But recently, we developed the AI um, program. They can automatically uh, ex extract, identify the rebars, and extract the rebar information. So during this migration, we can actually obtain the velocity in the concrete above each rebar. And with that velocity information from the measured time, we can then calculate the depth. So because the amplitude depends on the rebar depth, we need to correct all the amplitude assume we bring all the rebars to the same depth level. This is called the depth correction. So we are going to use the amplitude after a depth correction for the uh, bridge depth evaluation. And then we can uh, uh, align the data with the GPS location and then can generate a 2D uh, map based on the GPR data. So this is a GPR, uh, the entire um, Detailed process has been published in the ASC Journal for Bridge Engineering. Okay, next, uh, vertical electrical impedance, VEI. Um, this, uh, this testing system was developed by the BYU team, uh, Dr. Masio and Guthrie, and they have the idea, uh, NCHRP idea program, the final report in 2019. So basically, a they try to measure the impedance of concrete in the vertical direction. So the cover concrete from a surface to the rebar level, because we know it's kind of like, uh, think about, uh, we, many of us uh, use the uh, resistivity measurement. Resistivity measure uh, the resistance in concrete. Impedance, kind of a similar concept, but they, they use the AC current. So the impedance, traditionally, if you want to measure the impedance, you need to have one end direct, have a direct connection to the rebar. And then another one, uh, a probe contact the concrete surface. So in the original uh, version of this VEI methods, uh, the BYU team used this me uh, method, the connection, but then in recent development, they replaced, removed this direct connection to the rebar with a large area electrode. 
So these two figures actually is, is a flipped. Okay, so here the direct connection is replaced by this large area uh, uh, electrodes. So how large is really large. So uh, next I show you the, the picture. So because a really large connection, so we can assume there's a very low impedance that's equivalent to direct connection uh, connected to the rebar. And then here the center electrode that for, uh, forms this kind of a circuit, it can measure the impedance. So the, in the concrete, the high impedance represents the gold concrete and low impedance indicates the uh, location is probably there's a uh, rebar corrosion and high chloride concentration and means the deterioration of concrete. You, you see this really big, the, the loss of chains and uh, after this part, and this is the central uh, electrode. After that, so they also have a loss of chain and they need to use the water. This is the big water tank. They need to, to spray water to the bridge deck and that's try to maintain the good contact. And those big chains form the large area electrode. Uh, in their uh, idea report, uh, they kind of like a give a guideline uh, how to use the measurement results for evaluation. Uh, generally speaking, they found if the impedance is large, uh, 100 kilo ohm indicates good concrete. If it's below 10 kilo ohm, and that means a concern and probably that have a pretty good confidence for deterioration. So. If it's in between, it probably just a start to show some deterioration. There's a minor defects. So uh, uh, a third uh, technology we used is the uh, high definition image. So I will not explain all those details actually that belongs to uh, our collaborator, Dr. Sims. Uh, so I just briefly talk about the basic idea is they use uh, the multi-view sequence, um, well, they have the cameras, the four cameras, and they collect the high definition information. Then they develop a uh, crack uh, identification uh, uh, program. So automatically track, not just uh, compare the color difference, also try to track the orientation and then trace the cracks. So that's the result, um, the, the crack they traced from this bridge. I will show them more details later. Okay, here's the bridge we uh, investigate. We performed the test in 2018. This bridge in Nebraska, uh, 180 feet. This, this bridge has a concrete overlay, about a two inch overlay thickness. Um, so this is the three uh, NDE technology we used and we test. So when we perform the test, uh, we still keep the live traffic in this lane. We only test the shoulder and the northbound lane. And first, let me show you the GPR results. Uh, typically we show the GPR results that show the amplitude only. Uh, here we um, show the surface reflection and we show because we can extract the velocity of concrete. This is the velocity map. And this is the cover thickness. And this is the, um, uh, the, the map we are familiar with, the rebar reflection amplitude. We notice the surface, the velocity, and the amplitude. Actually, they show quite good consistency. That means, for example, in this uh, a location, we noted that means there is a surface defect that can be detected by the surface only, even before the wave reached the rebar level. And then this one also indicates the bad uh, lower amplitude. That means there's a defect in the surface, probably also uh, inside. And they indicate uh, serious, uh, very severe deterioration along the joint and along the cold joint. That's the cold joint. 
um, since we find the aptitude contains the most important information, we use the GPR uh, uh, aptitude. And this one shows uh, the rebar, uh, the uncover thickness variation. And this is the VEI. So VEI, they did uh, several paths and the, we noticed the pass one, pass two, and they're almost the same. The similar to the uh, GPR result, they also indicate a large deterior not deterioration region in this part and also on the left. In the middle, it's uh, relatively good. So if we look here on the left, on the right, and in the middle, it's better. But we are going to show everything on the same page. Uh, uh, something a little bit different from the GPR is this VI has a really good resolution in spatial resolution. It can detect all those fine uh, transverse uh, cracks. And this is the horizontal, the longitudinal joint. So from the, uh, based on the VEI, then BYU team immediately generated this map. And then based on this map, they choose two locations. One's a good location, one's the bad location. And then take the sample for chloride analysis. And they found in the good region, the chloride concentration is this number. In the bad region, the number is much higher. And then if we look at the VEI aptitude in the good region, uh, the impedance is uh, uh, 80 k, uh, kilo ohm, and in the bad region, it's really, really low. Definitely, this means uh, that we, we have 100% confidence. This is, has a severe deterioration. And if we compare to the GPR aptitude, this is a GPR uh, minus 3 dB, and in the bad region, it's minus 13 dB. Uh, although the, the threshold is still not quite um, uh, clear, because it's always uh, uh, it's a very challenging topic to determine, uh, to see where we need to make a cut in for GPR, where's the threshold. But generally, many people accept the, the um, uh, threshold is around minus seven, minus six dB. And so apparently these two numbers are far away from those thresholds. I will talk about the threshold uh, in this research. And this is a HDI image with those cameras and they form a staged image and then automatically track all those cracks. We notice there's a crack. So this is the joint. Below this joint, there are another kind of a, the uh, longitudinal crack that lasts for quite a, a large distance. And there are lots and lots of transverse cracks. Okay, so here's all the results on the same page. VEI, GPR, and the surface image. So if we compare this, we notice those are two big spot and that one big spot and some transverse cracks. Uh, so when we compare this, we notice that VEI shows uh, very nice fine details indicate those uh, uh, transverse cracks. Um, GPR has a really good resolution in the longitudinal direction. It's a millimeter level, but uh, in the lateral direction, because we uh, because of time restraint, we could only collect the data uh, with a two feet spacing. So the lateral resolution for GPR is not very good. So we are going to do the data fusion, see what we can get, to see if, how we can improve the results with the data fusion. So data fusion, we first present the a scanning path for GPR and the VEI. So blue is the VEI and the red for VEI. We notice they have some overlap, but they also have a different path. The way we try to fuse these two different data sets. So first we believe both VEI and the GPR, they measure the electrical property in concrete. Therefore, they should indicate the it's not a surprise they show very um, 
much similarity in these two, but how do we combine those information? We cannot directly, uh, let's say, use a weighted uh, summation because those numbers are very different. We need to first scale the number, and then we need to find the uh, correlation between these two data sets, and then we can convert one data set to another. Then we can form the uh, data fusion. So our idea is we first pick the data uh, in, the, in the overlapped region. So that means this the GPR and uh, VEI data collector from the same region. Then, okay, uh, let me see. We first uh, use those data, try to build the correlation, and then use this uh, developed correlation to converge one data set to another. So next I will show you the neural network method to build the correlation. The, the neural network method we use is autoencoder. It just can encode, let's say, uh, high dimensional data into the one dimension and then extract these common features. And these common feature give the correlation, give the relationship. And then we can the decode this, try to recover the original data set. The goal is try to uh, reduce, uh, minimize the difference between the input and the output. So here is the raw data, input data, GPR and the impedance. And it looks like we cannot see what kind of a clear relationship in, in them. But we notice a lot of data uh, are concentrating in this region. And with those autoencoder, we develop this nonlinear relationship. And with all those relationships based on the data collected from the same overlapped region. But then with this relationship, we can convert either GPR to VEI or VEI to GPR. And then we can plot, fuse the map. Another, actually, additional finding we didn't expect uh, when we performed this test is from this concentration, actually, we can probably estimate a threshold because we assume this bridge is not in a very detailed uh, condition. We assume most of the good data still concentrated. Then from this concentration boundary, uh, a boundary we kind of like a determine a threshold for GPR is around minus six dB and the VEI is about uh, four, that's a, uh, to the 10th of power. That means 10 kilo ohm. That's consistent with the previous study by BYU for VEI. So in the previous result, we noticed, although they show similar features, but they have a very different background color. If you just use to see yellow is bad, then we will get very different deterioration areas from VEI or from GPR. But now with the same, the consistent threshold, because the 10 kilo ohm corresponds to minus the, uh, 6 dB, we can use the same threshold applied to both data and then form the uh, fused data. In the fused data, we notice this fuse image is very similar to the VEI and it con contains the important features from both images, but it also shows additional features. So for example, in this one, it just show the joint, but here we notice below the joint and there's another kind of a horizontal crack. And I remember that when we overlap with the crack information, we notice those cracks, they were not seen on neither the GPR or VEI, but it is shown on the fuse the map. So here we uh, merely just uh, simply use the uh, crack image as a, a validation of the uh, fuse the map, but in the future, we can also extract the crack width and to maybe we can use that information to give the more accurate evaluation based on the image data only. Okay, so conclusion, I will not repeat, but basically I would say GPR and the VEI, they are very similar results. But since the VEI is a relatively new technology and now there's no research to compare this uh, 
uh, technology with other uh, NDE method yet. So this is the first work. We compare that with the GPR. And we notice the fusion map can show additional features. And we also, uh, we believe probably one of the uh, reason the VI can see lots of those uh, detail features of the cracks, the transverse crack, probably is because of the water increased the contrast. Uh, and uh, it's just a, a surprise additional finding. We found this research, we found that we, we can probably determine the threshold for the GPR. And in the future, uh, we are going to confirm the threshold by comparing with the half cell uh, management, uh, measurement and the include cracks uh, from the HDI. Uh, so finally, I want to acknowledge the support from the Nebraska uh, Department of Transportation and all the graduate students, collaborators uh, helping in this uh, uh, test. Thank you. Thanks, Jinying. That's very interesting. Uh, we do have a few questions. We have uh, about five minutes, uh, three questions you're showing right now. We'll start from the top and see how many we can do. Uh, the first question is about EEI. Does heavy rain affect the results? Uh, basically, the spray water um, on a dry day and heavy rain, would, would you get different VEI results from those two different kinds of uh, moisture conditions? Uh, we didn't uh, test during the heavy one rain. But I, uh, in this test, actually, the sequence uh, is important. We worried maybe the VEI spray water may affect our uh, GPR. That's why we perform the GPR first. And then VEI and uh, then the image at uh, the very end. But I believe uh, since both the image and the VEI see those transverse cracks very well, I believe that's actually the water uh, actually increase the, uh, the contrast. It's just uh, after surface, uh, just barely dry, but the water still probably stay in crack, actually that increased contrast. Uh, if we could collect another set of GPR data after that applying water, we may get even better results from a GPR. But definitely you don't want to with those kind of running water. Mm -hmm. Uh, you kind of answered the second question as well about concrete humidity uh, in air voids. Um, I'm going to skip to the third, but if you could, uh, as the third session, as the third presentation goes on, take a look at these. Uh, what type of autoencoder did you use? A DAE, SAE, CAE, or other? You know, this is a question I need to ask my students. <laughs> <laughs> it's, fair, it's a fair answer. <laughs> Um, another question, how close should the GPR be to the concrete surface? Curious about uh, possibility of equipping GPR on UAVs. Uh, this is a ground carport GPR. So the, you know, the ground carport the antenna is really just a probably a few millimeter. Oh, uh, not a few. Yeah, it's a probably a few millimeter from the surface. It's just a barely. Uh, so, but it's the difference from the air carport. If it's an air carport, they, they can run really fast. And I think Shane did the last one, Eric Apple GPR. Our next right. step is so we try to correlate the air carport and the ground carport. Um, and one last question. Did your data collected from bare decks? Uh, was it collected from bare decks or overlay systems? Um, and is it feasible? How does the feasibility, particularly of EEI, change for overlays versus bare decks? This is a great question. Actually, uh, during that uh, summer, we c we picked three different uh, bridges. One is just a regular um, bare concrete. Bare concrete actually should be the easiest case. Uh, overlay always makes the challenging. The one I present today is the one with the concrete overlay. Uh, we also picked uh, one short uh, asphalt overlay bridge. Uh, and I didn't present the uh, asphalt overlay bridge result is because that bridge has a very, very thick uh, old asphalt overlays. So the uh, GPR antenna we used cannot penetrate to detect the rebars, but only we have the VEI result. VEI still shows kind of quite a good result. Uh, but recently, just the uh, uh, last quarter, we test uh, uh, another two bridges uh, with asphalt overlay uh, and 
we also show a uh, collect data after they remove the S4 overlay, and we collect during the different stage of the construction. Currently, we work on the data analysis. Hopefully, next time we we are going to present the results from that bridge. Thank you.